Hey guys, Congresswoman Camac here. Sorry about that. Um, and it is about 10 after 10 and it's Monday. We are up in Washington, DC, our nation's capital. We are in for two, possibly three weeks of an incredibly uh, busy, busy session up here in Congress. It is going to be pretty intense. So I wanted to give you guys a rundown of what, sorry, someone keeps calling me. We'll see if they call back again. Um, so uh, it's it's been interesting um, being up here um, just in the last 24 hours. You can, te you can sense that people are, are antsy because we know there's so much stuff going on. Um, and so I was making a few notes of things um, that are happening this week and just kind of want to give you guys a rundown of what's on tap for next week um, because you're hearing a lot in the news about uh, the reconciliation bill, about the infrastructure bill. You're hearing a lot about different things and it's, it's so hard to keep up between Afghanistan, the border, uh, what's happening with the mandates, all these things. It's really, really difficult. So I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of what is happening this week um, as well as next week, but really just want to kind of give you the quick rundown. So let's start with um, the infrastructure and reconciliation package. So uh, there will be no vote on the reconciliation or infrastructure package this week. It's, it's not on the books. It's not happening this week. That has been pushed to next week. Let me tell you why that's a good thing. So we know that um, the moderates, the moderate Democrats, have said that they want to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill before they take up final passage of the reconciliation package. Now, I am going to uh, show you guys a breakdown of what the reconciliation process is because it's a very um, nuanced process. You, you can only use it for three things. You can only use it once for mandatory spending, for revenue generation, and for debt ceiling. And so you can't uh, attach extraneous items to the reconciliation process. And one of the big wins that we just had yesterday was the Senate parliamentarian ruled that the amnesty provision that the Democrats had put into the process was ruled extraneous. It was not germane to the process. So they cut the amnesty portion of the, uh, the reconciliation package together. So that was very good news. There will be no amnesty in this $3.5 trillion spending boondoggle. Um, so they're looking at next week for both the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which again, it really wasn't bipartisan, um, at least in the House. And I can tell you, having been through several committee weeks where we've been working through the legislative text, not one Republican amendment has been accepted by the Democrats in this reconciliation package. There has not been a single consideration for any of the uh, Republican ideas or, and, and, and some of these I can tell you have been very common sense. Actually a lot have been common sense, benefiting communities, benefiting our country. And, and it's just really shameful that because of party politics, the left will not allow any consideration for Republican amendments that include a number of provisions that would benefit their constituents. So it's just really, really um, sad to watch that. But um, what you'll be hearing about this week is really teeing up for next week on this infrastructure and reconciliation process. So keep your eyes open for that, that um, uh Kristen Cinema, the senator from um, um, Arizona, that she is not going to support the reconciliation package if there is not a um, a, a vote on the infrastructure package. So it's 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 going to be interesting to see. You know, Kurt Schrader, he's a moderate Democrat from out west. He's in the House. He voted against some of the committee provisions last week during his markup. And so you're seeing a lot of pushback and inner party dynamics playing out on the Democrat side. Another thing um, I want to hit on is uh, Afghanistan. 
right now, as it stands, our office has helped get 339 confirmed individuals out of Afghanistan. I'm so proud of our team, you guys. I cannot tell you how incredible our team is in getting people out of Afghanistan, out of danger. And I'm just incredibly grateful to have such an amazing team. There are still several, several Americans that have been left behind. And that is because this administration is absolutely shameful. They left people behind. And I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, you don't leave an American behind. You don't, you don't treat your allies this way. You, you don't, you don't do what this administration has done. And so, um, I am going to continue to give you updates about Afghanistan. As I said, we still have uh, several Americans that are on our list. I know that there are other Americans that have been left behind. I've been talking with some of my colleagues, Republicans and Democrats. They have Americans on their list. We cross-reference to make sure that we are talking to each other and we all have different groups that are working to get folks out. If you know of anyone who is on those lists or if you know of someone who is not on a list and trying to get out, you can contact our office. We're continuing to work these cases. We will not stop until every single American gets home. Um, because of security purposes, um, I can't give advice or intel um, out on social media, obviously, but uh, you can call our office and, and you can start working with our team um, if you know someone in Afghanistan who is looking to get out. Um, other things happening this week, NDAA. The NDAA is the National Defense Authorization Act. That is a must pass bill. And what it is, is it is the funding for all of our military and defense. Um, we have seen a cut to NDAA under Biden, and uh, that's really, really tough because we were in the process of rebuilding our, our military, really uh, upping our readiness. And when you cut the military that is in the process of rebuilding, our readiness goes down. And I can tell you right now, we are not safer today than we were 20 years ago. Uh, the challenges have gotten more dynamic, more complicated, and we need to be ready on all fronts to uh, defend the homeland because that is the number one charge of the United States government. So we are uh, offering several amendments. There have been hundreds of amendments that have been offered to um, the process of the NDAA. It is a um, it is an open modified process where any member can offer uh, their ideas, their amendments that are germane to that issue. And so I'm really excited uh, about some of the work that we're doing there. Very uh, proud of one of our amendments. I'll be testifying today in the Rules Committee about this particular amendment. It is something very small, seemingly, but is going to have a tremendous impact on our nation's veterans. It is requiring that we digitize the records, the VA records. So currently, if a veteran has a um, inquiry or needs to go in for a comp and pen evaluation or there's an appeal, they need to get their service records pulled from the National Personnel Records Management um, System. It's actually giant warehouses that have paper uh, records. And with COVID, they were already behind pre-COVID, but with COVID, they shut down and they weren't no one was there pulling records. So um, because of fires in the past, there have been records that have been um, destroyed or term, uh, lost. Um, it's been a big old mess and it's 2021. We should have all these records digitized. So this amendment that we are offering would digitize these records, which would give instant access to the VA um, to pull the records for these veterans so that they can expedite all of that care in those cases. This is a common sense amendment. I'm really proud of our team um, for moving it through the process. And as I said, I'll be testifying on this this afternoon. You guys can tune in. We'll make sure to post that as well. But this is going to help our veterans tremendously. And like I said, it's a common sense thing. Right now, the National Personnel Records Management System has over 500,000 requests that they're behind on. Um, you guys have probably seen some of the work that we've been doing in conjunction with our Senate counterparts, demanding answers as to why why they have not been making accommodations if they won't open up the record center to have people work in the warehouse 
they have ways that they can send folks with scanners and computers and laptops to scan from home and they have set that up but then they never implemented it so it was a big mess we're going to tackle that issue and get some resolution for our veterans the other um, couple of amendments that we're offering is one dealing with Taiwan, strengthening um, our relationship and our ties with Taiwan and standing firm against Chinese Communist Party and the mainland. The other one is uh, looking at the impact that these va vaccine mandates have had on recruitment and retention with our armed services. We know that it has taken a hit. Again, our military readiness depends on us having the force available and, and ready and willing. Because of the mandates, we have seen some tremendous hits. So we want to know exactly what extent those, those um, mandates have really hurt our readiness. So we are looking at that as part of this NDA markup, and I'll keep you guys posted. A couple of other things going on. Um, there's going to be an abortion bill. Judy Chu is pushing forward a uh, an abortion on demand bill. Basically, says you can abort a child right up until delivery day. Um, it's it's a pretty awful, horrific bill. We will be fighting it tooth and nail. This is something that they are pushing forward in response to the Texas. Um, the, the Texas bill, which is really contrary to the Tenth Amendment. If a state wants to, to do this, um, then that is their right. And so this is, again, a massive overreach from the federal government, Nancy Pelosi, wanting to have her, her hands in every aspect of, of our lives. On the homeland front and the border, I actually had a conversation with former um, Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, yesterday. And we were talking about different ways that we can, in Congress, in the minority, hold this administration accountable. He made several recommendations. We'll be carrying those out. But we have been asking, really demanding from this administration, why, why they are not holding firm on closing down the border, upholding Title 42, why the MPP, the Remain in Mexico policy, has not been upheld even after the courts have ruled that they have to do it. So... He gave us um, some, some really good information about how we can really force the administration's hand on enforcing and upholding the law, and that's been really important. Um, you guys know that it's a disaster down on the border. You guys know that we've been on top of it. We've been down there several times to expose what the media won't cover. Um, I will have several conversations this week and next up here in Washington, D.C., both with Homeland Security. I will be questioning Secretary uh, Mayorkas, who's the he Homeland Security Secretary, this Wednesday, I believe. But then also uh, we'll be chatting with the Border Patrol uh, folks here in Washington. I'm also having a conversation with the Ambassador of Mexico. We have got to get this under control. It is, uh, it is eroding the very um, fabric of our nation as a nation of laws. If we have no borders, we have no sovereign nation. And this is something that cannot stand. So we are going to do everything we can to support our Border Patrol agents and, uh, and to really make sure that our country is safe, especially in the face of all these new homeland security threat challenges that we have. Um, the other thing going on, we've got a couple of ag initiatives going on for, for me specifically. I have uh, a home, an, an ag committee hearing and uh, we'll be talking about um, commodities and in particular blueberries. And um, there's also uh, a hearing that the uh, majority, the Democrats wanted to push, which was carbon markets in the forestry industry. So we're having conversations with all of our um, forest landowners and uh, all of all of our timber guys and gals, and they're going to give us some really good insight into what is a workable program for them. So I subscribe to the theory that you don't know what you don't know, and that is why I'm so proud to have really a team of experts that we can call on at any time in any given industry. So excited to be talking with our forestry folks this week, proud to represent so many in the wood basket in the southeast. And really to kind of wrap it up, the other thing to keep an eye on this week is the CR. You know, there's going to be a continuing resolution that the, uh, Nancy Pelosi puts forward, and that's going to be a rubber stamp of spending that is um, going to be pretty much shoved down everyone's throats. That is uh, pretty much this week in a nutshell. But the good news is, the Democrats don't have the votes to push through the $3.5 trillion reconciliation package, which would effectively bankrupt our country. And they really aren't 
in a position to put forward the infrastructure bill because they are tied up with the ultra liberal left on their side. So there's all this in in party fighting that's happening on the Democrat side. And uh, the thing that we have to remember is that we're taking the house back. So I'm excited about that. Final thought, if you know of a young person who is interested in going into the service academy, like Naval Academy or West Point, Air Force, Merchant Marines, you name it, um, we are hosting our service academy days um, to get into West Point or the Naval Academy or any, any of the service academies. You have to have a nomination from a member of Congress, from a senator, vice president, or the president of the United States. So one of the things um, that we do is we have several academy days. If you go onto our website, camac.house.gov, and you click on the services tab, there is a service academy page that has a packet of information. Those applications are due at the end of this month. There are no exceptions. So if you are interested in attending, if your child is interested in attending and applying, it is a very prestigious, incredible experience. And I highly recommend that uh, if you are a senior, you look into this. It is a wonderful, wonderful experience to get a world-class education and then serve your country. Um, really incredible. So camac.house.gov, you can find all the information. Applications are due on the 30th and close of business. We cannot accept anything after the deadline. Uh, we want this to be a very, very fair process. And after that, then we review everything and it goes to a panel of experts that then interview the applicants. So from there, we make recommendations and it is really, uh, like I said, incredible for these young people to go in and uh, have this experience. So I know I've got to get going here. I've got a meeting in about four minutes. So let me flip through here. Um, and see what questions. I'm so sorry that there's so many. <laughs> Don, worthless Republican. Well, you're watching me and I'm not watching you. So I guess worthwhile enough for your time. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Don, Rhonda, Pamela, Billy, Lori, Chris, Patty, Carrie Ann, Kathleen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ron, thank you for standing up for We the People. Yes, I'm telling you, we we have got so much fight going on right now. Um, so much, um, there's so much anger in our country uh, about what's going on. And honestly, I, I, I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I hate that we have gotten to a place where people see themselves as one party versus the other instead of as Americans. And so we have got a country to save and we're going to fight like hell every single day to do it. So thank you. I appreciate it. Carol Berry, good morning. Good morning. Deborah, the debt ceiling is looming. Yes. So uh, the debt ceiling is up. Uh, you'll see this in the next two weeks. Um, the Democrats have to make the decision. Are they going to increase the debt ceiling? Republican, it's not, it's not in Republicans' hands. We are in the minority. So in the Senate and in the House, the, the Democrats have to make the choice. Are they going to continue down this path to bankrupt the country? Are they going to get their fiscal house in order? Or are they going to keep spending us into oblivion until we run out of everyone's money? They will have to make the decision. And if they don't increase the debt ceiling, they will have to completely modify all of the expenditures. And then you're looking at a government shutdown as well. So, I mean, the government's, the, the Democrats will have to make the decision. Are they going to shut the government down? One thing, though, that you should know that always constantly gets pushed out there as a, as a fear-mongering tool, when the government shuts down, it doesn't impact mandatory spending. So Social Security checks... Those are on autopilot. Whether the government shuts down or not, those still go out. So don't listen to any of those people on the left that are, you know, full of crap saying, I'm, I, I, if I shut the government down or if they shut the government down, people's checks aren't going to get me. That's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. That is on autopilot mandatory spending. Social security is not impacted by a government shutdown. Those checks get sent out regardless. And that is fear mongering tactics that we have seen over the years from the left and it's nonsense. So just don't buy into that. Um, let me see. Kathleen. Good morning, Mike. Krista. Good morning, Leota. Hello, hello, hello. All right. 
<laughs> Bob, they are socialists. Yes, they absolutely are. People who believe that socialism is a good thing. I highly encourage them to take a, a trip down to Venezuela, see how it's working out for them. Um, let me see. I'm seeing if there's some questions in here. Um, Dawn, why can't we court martial Millie then bring civilians in for questioning? Okay. So we get that question a lot about Millie and, um, there's the revelation that just came out last week as part of Woodward's book. Now I, I am highly skeptical one because how do you sell books? You create a stir, you create interest. So I think it was absolutely a marketing ploy to drop that about Millie. If it is true, however, which I, I'm, again, all this needs to be investigated. Millie, Blinken, Mayorkas, uh, Sullivan, uh, Biden, all these folks need to be investigated. And I have been calling for their resignation because you just, it's treasonous what has happened. Absolute treason. Anyone who still supports this administration after they left Americans to die, on the battlefield, not even let's, I'm not even talking just about, uh, you know, the, the Afghanistan situation. They have left people behind repeatedly for years. Look at Benghazi. Hillary left people behind to die Four people. I, I mean, the Democrats just, again, I, I can't, but, um, so with, with Millie, Millie is as chairman of the Joint Chiefs, he has no operational authority to, one, be having conversations in that realm with his Chinese counterparts. Two, if he is having those conversations without the authority of the president, who is commander in chief, then he is in direct subordination, in subordination of the commander in chief whole lot of issues in that whole situation. If it proves to be true, he already needed to resign for the Afghanistan debacle and so much more. But this proves that at that point, you're aiding and abetting the enemy. You have committed treason. That to me is a court martial that is waiting to happen and it needs to happen. People ask often, can we court martial the commander in chief? No, you cannot court martial the president. He is a civilian. He is not subject to that. So there, there are only a few ways that you can hold the president accountable. You can demand resignation, which we have. You can impeach, which there's a couple of articles of impeachment that are out there. I've read them and they're dealing with things that don't even deal with Afghanistan. So um, that's going to actually be something we talk about this week. Um, uh, also, we just don't have the votes. We could have every single Republican on board with impeachment. We still we just don't have the votes. So at that point, you're wasting time and energy into something while we can actually be moving the needle on the border. And, you know, you've got 24 hours in a day. You have to figure out how you're going to work your time. So um, impeachment, the 25th Amendment, um, and then resignation. There's, there's no, there's no other way. Um, so that is kind of what I wanted to clarify because people ask all the time if we can court martial Biden and that cannot happen. He is a civilian, so you can't court martial a civilian. Um, April, good morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. You guys are awesome. Oh, and I'm one minute over. So I'm going to have to um, tune out here, guys. I've got to start this meeting. Um, but we are, um, we're going to stay on top of it. I know that it has been quite a crappy year. It has been a couple, two crappy years, let's be honest. Um, but I don't want you, I don't want you to lose faith. I don't want you to give up hope. There is going to be a, um, truly a, a reckoning with, with all the spending that has been going on with all the, all the nonsense that has played out we are going to get our country back and we're not going to do it as Republicans. We're going to do it as Americans because that's who we are at the end of the day, not Republicans versus Democrats, Americans, people who love this country, who love our constitution, who love our flag, who stand up for our military and our first responders. That's what we're fighting for. So I'm just really proud of the work that our team is doing. I'm really proud of all of you who have been following us on this journey. 
Um, I'm going to give you guys a rundown this week. I'll be showing you behind the scenes all kinds of stuff. So things that our team is working on, ranging from broadband to agriculture to defense. I'll be taking you behind the scenes at the Homeland Security hearing with Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, there's going to be a tremendous amount of really awesome behind the scenes uh info that you guys are going to be uh, a part of and i'm very excited to show you what it's really like up here why the swamp needs to be drained because some of these folks up here they're more concerned about a title than actually doing the work and we were elected to come up here and do the damn work and that's what we're doing so really really proud of that and we will keep fighting like hell we've got a lot of energy and we're going to make sure that we continue to fight for our constitution. So y'all have a great day. Um, we'll be posting up different things. Adeline, our comms director just walked in. That's her saying, wrap it up. <laughs> so y'all take care and we'll see you soon.